Hello, uh, I am Alexander Dugin, professor of Moscow State University, and that is the last lecture of the course of the ethno-sociology uh, that we have filmed, organized uh, during uh, the uh, 2000. Uh, 13. Uh, so the topic, the main subject of this final conclusive lecture is uh, the application or the possibility of the application of the ethno-sociological method developed in the previous lectures to the contemporary society. Uh, we have described the process of the involution of uh, the society, starting from the ethnos and going toward uh, the individual identity of the global civil society with a kind of uh, mm, uh, theoric continuation of the same direction in the sense of the post-society and the creation, apparition, the manifestation of the post-human species in the sense of individuals. Uh, and all that was um, based on the example of historic development of the Western civilization and Western society. Ethnic groups and ethnoses, ethnos as societies um, existed in different parts of the world and exist uh, still. So ethnos is a kind of human society that we could find everywhere. In the past, in the far past, in the, in the ancient times, uh, in the classical times, in the recent times, and today. So, today also, in the contemporary, contemporary moment, there are ethnic tribes living in the Amazon River, in the um, different um, Pacific Island, in the Africa, in the um, East Asia or in the North Eurasia. So we could find easily in the contemporary world ethnic tribes, ethnic group, and we could study them. So the ethnos uh, is not artificial concept, but a kind of the human society that is empirically present, present, and we could find in the history different traces and uh, documents of the existence of uh, these kind of societies in the past. So that the ethnos, the ethnos is something that existed and something that still exists. So, speaking about ethnos, we are speaking about possible past of the more complicated societies, for example, the peoples, at, and at the same time, we are speaking about the societies that still exist today, still exist today. So that is the object, object of the ethno-sociological uh, science or discipline to study this stage of the human society that existed and still exists. And if we follow the idea of French structuralist and, and anthropologist Levi Strauss, we could ask ourselves maybe ethnic societies or ethnos 
not only live by inertia in this state, but maybe they want to live in such a way. Maybe it is not only destiny, but also free will of some uh, human beings. Maybe they choose to be ethnic society. Maybe it is a kind of the result of their inner and profound cultural decision to be the ethnos, to conserve and uh, reaffirm its and assert its ethnic identity as collective identity. So, the fact is very important that ethnic societies exist still today. So, they are not only the theoretical construction of what maybe was was in the past, but that is something that is in the present, that still exists today, exists today. And that is very important. And if so, if we recognize the existence of the ethnos today, so we could ask, as precisely Levi-Strauss uh, does, if they choose to be ethnos, if we could choose our identity and, for example, to choose ethnic identity as a kind of the society we want to live in. Not obliged, but want. It is free will. So, that is something that goes against progressivist uh, and evolutionist doctrine of the necessary development of the society. And if the society doesn't develop in the Western sense, historical sense, so that means that, that, that uh, there are some obstacles that uh, don't let them do so. Maybe that is quite opposite, that there is decision to develop and there is decision to stay as we are. So, it is very important humanistic uh, question that from the major, majority of the cultural anthropologists, the, of the modern anthropologists, uh, respond to this question that knowing better the ethnic societies, they, the majority comes of anthropologists, of the honest anthropologists, come to the conclusion that it is precisely the decision and the, the, the will, the free will of, of human beings. So it is beautifully expressed in the film of Werner Herzog, where uh, Green Ants dream. So, uh, in this film, there is a picture of Australian tribe that refused to, um, to accept uh, the modern conditions of life and the um, psychological drama of one white Anglo-Saxon person that being involved in the process of technical, industrial construction uh, on the uh, lands um, that belong to this uh, archaic Australian tribe that uh, that understands who understands the, the question of uh, whether they uh, decide or follow the destiny to be archaic or to develop uh, understood this person the hero of the film where the green ants dream of the Werner Herzog, he decides, decides to be on their part. He understood that that is their decision to conserve and reaffirm their identity, ethnic identity, and he decided to stay with them. 
and not with the modernity. So, ethnos uh, in this film, as well as in the concept of modern anthropologists, is a kind of choice. We could choose to be ethnic, we could choose to be people, traditional, religious, hierarchical, we could choose to be national, we could choose to be individual, we could choose to be postmodern. Final, it is a kind of inner decision. Taken not maybe by individuals, but in some way by society, by groups, and so on. So, the fact that the ethnos is not only the past, but also present, is very important for the ethnosociology. So we could study the ethnos because it exists right now, here and now in our world. We could make a trip, make a journey uh, and to and meet with the ethnic tribes and to study them and to speak with them and to be with them and to live with them and to pass on their uh, on their side. So, we could choose to be ethnic. It is very important, so um, ethnosociology loses uh, the, the sense of the excavation of, of the past archaeological science, but it is living science because the ethnos, ethnic society still live. The second form studied by us in our course. It is traditional society based on the concept of the people, of the Laos. This so uh, sociological uh, form, the first derivative of ethnos, uh, is marked by existence of um, developed uh, social stratifications, by the states, by the different levels of hierarchies, by the religious society, uh, religious institution, and by um, highly sophisticated uh, culture and philosophy of pre-modern type. If we consider our present contemporary world, we easily find also these kinds of the society. So we could easily find the peoples, the Laos, because any religious society, any pre-modern form of social organization with, with clans, with the castas, with uh, heroic traditional political elite of pre-bourgeois type, they still exist in different countries of the world. And the majority of the non-Western countries, there are the institution, institution social institution of pre-modern type. So there are religious uh, religious societies, for example, Islamic society, all Islamic society is pre-modern, all uh, uh, country with dominate, uh, domi domination of the Islamic religious religion is pre-modern. Uh, and that is also, we, we should consider that as Laos, as kind of pre-modern society. The caste organization of the modern India that we easily find behind the democratic facade, behind the democratic uh, form of nominal uh, parliamentary um, republic of India, uh, that the other, that is the other example of the um, billion people and more society living in the pre-modern conditions. So, uh, there are in India some uh, zones of ethnic kind and style of living in the southern populations with the Dravidian and different other 
uh, ethnic groups in the India, and there are uh, the other zones and the majority of the India that is organized uh, 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 by the axis of highly uh, caste uh, hierarchical society. So, when we are talking about uh, Laos as the first derivative of the um, ethnos, we also could find many examples of the existing of such ethno-sociological structures that could um, hide behind the uh, normative, uh, legal, democratic or national basis. So India, for example, is on one side national statehood, but on the other side, in, uh, if we look deep, Deeper, we discover immediately pre-modern hierarchical society with, with the uh, organization of the castes. And so French sociologist uh, Louis Dumont, who has studied uh, with, uh, modern contemporary Indian society, uh, he describes it as uh, traditional society with uh, traditional caste still existing in the any corner of Indian social, political, and cultural life. So there are uh, more complicated cases when we have a kind of mixture between national society and pre-modern society. So mm, the kind of mixture between uh, identity or individual identity doubled with uh, national artificial identity uh, on the bourgeois type with the pre-modern people's identity. Uh, I'm calling that by a special term that I use in sociological studies, the term archaeomodern modernity. Archaeomodernity. Uh, or when the modernity is a kind of facade or, or the, the form, uh, or hollow form, that uh, um, is only a nominal uh, aspect of the society uh, that is organ organized on pre-modern principles. So this kind of mixture of the modernity with the pre-modernity in the context of archaeal modernity is very usual case, uh, especially in non-European societies. So, in our contemporary world, where normally, if we, uh, if we believe to the European science, there could not be pre-modernity, because in the Europe there is modernity, flourishing modernity, but beyond the limits of Western world, there is pre-modernity, uh, there are pre-modern society, there are ethnic society and people's society. So we could discover that everywhere. Uh, ethnic society and the first derivative of ethnic society, people's society. Uh, they are not um, politically recognized always. Uh, sometimes their social structures act um, as parallel to the official national or uh, legal structures, but they exist and they affect their social life. For example, in Islamic countries, uh, the weight and the importance of the religious institutions and the religion circles is very high. It is obvious that that is important political and so social factor. Maybe the most important um, and uh, above uh, the other. So if we apply this ethno-sociological method to the study of contemporary societies with pre-modern nature, we could uh, identify easily existence 
of ethnic groups and Laos, the first derivative of the ethnics. So it is very important because we also we have the institutions of pre-modern type, for example, religion, that plays important part not only outside of the West, but also inside of the West. And so we could trace existence of the pre-modern institutions inside of the modern societies, inside of the West itself. So that shows that uh, we could study some aspect of contemporary society as if we are treating a pre-modern society. And if we understand the main sociological features of this pre-modern society, and when we could make a neat difference between Ethnos and Laos, we could understand better what is going on in some uh, complicated situation in contemporary world not in the past, because pre-modernity is not only the past as well as archaic form of social organization. Pre-modernity is still existing. It is something that belongs to our contemporary moment and not only to the past. It is very important consideration that shows the importance of the uh, of the uh, ethnosociology as discipline. At the same time, we could understand better the process of the modernization in the non-European society because this process of modernization uh, understood ethno-sociologically is the creation or in implementation of the individual, individual identity instead of the uh, identity of the different hierarchical groups. So against, instead of ethnical uh, identity of the masses and the heroic individualistic identity of the political elite of the pre-modern society. If we understand well this, the, 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 the meaning of the process of modernization from the ethnosociological point of view, we could understand better what is going on in some non-European society, uh, uh, which, uh, what are the obstacles to this modernization, uh, which pattern uh, it, uh, where, what pattern it follows, and so on. We could make uh, better analysis of the modernization of the pre-modern society uh, and um, regard this modernization um, with more details and understand better. Uh, after that, we could also uh, regard the process of the creation of the civil society and um, the development of the national states as uh, second uh, derivative of the ethnos uh, in the ethnosociological perspective. So uh, the uh, destruction of the national identity should be regarded in something completely different as the destruction of the ethnic identity or the people's identity. is a completely different process because uh, when we uh, liberate individual from the national identity, where it is the process of the uh, liberation on something that is already in place, that uh, that's something that already exists and that was theoretically and socially created as a concept in the context of the nation. So it is a step that uh, whose possibility is granted by the existence of the uh, properly organized national society, national state. So if we have a real nation, 
real modern nation, if the modernization of the nation uh, is um, accomplished, so we have individual identity of the national citizen, we have this, this figure of the national citizen that we could liberate from nation and we receive the citizen, individual identity. But if we uh, liberate uh, from the national context, for example, the society that isn't enough individualistic, we will receive something other, something completely different. And we have, we never will receive uh, civil society. That uh, is very practical way to understand, for example, colored revolution uh, in the Middle East and in the North uh, Africa. Because uh, destroying national, artificial national post-colonial state there, we receive not Western type democratic individualistic society that should logically follow national organization but we uh, we have a pre-modern kind of tribalist or uh, um, clans and religious sects organization uh, of completely um, different different type than we would uh, expect if we uh, don't make the difference between post-national civil society and the disappearance of the national status, statehood in the society where the national uh, identity was not properly doubled by implementation of individual uh, identity. So that, that could serve us very important uh, instrument ethnosociology, ethnosociology in this situation in these cases and after that we could understand what is going on with the passage uh, uh, transition from the um, national society in Europe so uh, toward uh, post-national society and with the help of the ethnosociology we could understand better the European unity, Union, for example, as post-national, first post-national form organization of the, um, of the uh, global society, because European Union is an uh, example of uh, what the West uh, thinks, uh, thinks about the future of the humanity. So the humanity in a whole uh, according to the Western vision of the history and the end of the history, should repeat European uh, example, uh, experience, and create a post-national world. So that is a kind European Union is a kind of the future that exists in the present. So there is a past existing in the present. So uh, ethnic or uh, people's society, and there is the future existing in, uh, the, uh, in the present, that is European Union. So we have, in the contemporary moment of the present, we have different ethnosociological form, different derivatives they, that coexist. They coexist in two ways. In one sense, they coexist as Western zone and not Western zone. In the Western zone, we have uh, gone th through all possible or, or, or almost all possible stages of the ethno-sociology, of the evolution from the ethnic society toward the uh, individual identity. So we could consider that as the accomplished history that uh, is a, um, that has approached to its end in this sense fukuyama is completely right because logically we have exhausted all the possibilities in the western society we have passed through all the possible ethnological stages and if we are westerners we could imagine our historical experience as something universal that uh, is a kind of the same way gone 
by the Westerners uh, first, and the other uh, societies uh, are obliged to repeat this experience if we are ethnocentrists. So if not, that, that could be the, the, the different, uh, different options, but if we um, are member, normal member of Western society, we consider our, our history as universal one, and so we see other society, non-Western society, as developing in the same direct direction. So, but, uh, if we accept that, this uh, Eurocentric perspective, never, nevertheless, we should recognize that beyond the borders, the limits of the Western world, there are, in the contemporary moment, the society, they are not Western, they are not modern, they, that, that belong to the different phase of ethno-sociological and historical uh, development. So, it is very important to understand better, not Western world, ethno-sociology helps with that, because in the contemporary moment we are dealing with not only with modern, but with, uh, not only with the present, but with the past and the future at the same time. It enlarges our possibility to understand uh, Western and not Western societies and uh, um, understand better the famous clash of civilizations because the clash of uh, civilizations uh, declared by Samuel Huntington is precisely this confrontation between the society that are in different stage of ethno-sociological development because there are modern civilization and pre-modern civilization with the zone of archaic ethnic, uh, ethnic group. Or also, uh, according to our anal analysis, ethnic factor is presented in the basic level of the more complicated people's society, traditional society. So the picture uh, becomes more sophisticated and complicated, but most correct to understand that and very helpful to deal with uh, not Western society or for the not western society to deal with western society so uh, that uh, shows the importance and the actuality of the um, ethnosociology it, but there is the other way to understand uh, relevance of the ethnosociology because we could apply ethnosociological method to the synchronistic analysis of the Western or not Western society. So, we could make a kind of, um, of, of picture where all these phases uh, that we have described di diachronistically and the way of, of, of that one phase follows the other, we could imagine uh, these um, phases, these stages, simultaneously. For example, we could put ethnos in the basis of the society. Uh, people or Laos, the second uh, level, the second floor, uh, the mm, nation as artificial collective identity on the third floor, uh, the civil society, civil society, global society on the fourth floor and, for example, on the fifth floor, post-society uh, peopled by individuals and in the post-modernity. And we could consider any existing society, uh, Western, not Western, archaic, traditional, and so on, with this scale. So, in Europe, what is ethnic level? For example, immigration, 
different immigration groups that are not uh, integrated enough in the context of Western society. They are still living in some zone of European society in ethnic condition. So uh, they are not recognized as such, but ethno-sociologically, they are in this condition. There are a kind of tribalistic level that is mostly uh, linked with immigrants, immig uh, but also with some regionalistic artificial revival of, um, for example, pagan or traditional, um, tra uh, traditional uh, kind of European, uh, European, uh, European pre-modern ethnic society. Uh, the, the film Willow Men uh, um, is a kind of um, example of the possibility, maybe um, this kind of art or imagination, but possibility of the existence of the pre-modern European uh, pagan, pre-Christian groups in the uh, context of the Europe. And if we agree that ethnic identity is the result of the choice, why not consider the possibility to return to the ethnic identity for the European peoples as a kind of the free choice? Uh, it is not excluded, but it is maybe more um, theoretical concept, but there is a fact. Some immigrants' circles are ethnic, and they are present in the context of the civil society. So we can, could consider that as a kind of basis, basis of, uh, uh, of, of this uh, lowest, lowest uh, level, lowest floor of the society, but that could be identified in uh, the uh, civil society of Europe or in, of United States. But at the same time, if we apply the same, the same uh, picture for non uh, European society, we immediately you know, find mo more important segments of population living in the archaic ethnic way. For example, in Russia, the population of Northern Caucasus, uh, partly or uh, of the Northern, northern um, ethnics group or the some uh, ethnics uh, of uh, Siberia or, and so on. And many uh, ethnic groups in India and some ethnic groups in China. So there are uh, ethnic groups in different non-European society that uh, they form the, also the part of, 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 of the society as a whole. For example, in Brasilia, there are Amazonian, Amazonian uh, um, lands peopled by uh, the population living in the archaic, ethnic uh, way of life, as well as in the Pacific or, uh, uh, Islands or uh, in Australia or in Africa. And there are many, many uh, segments of population belonging to this kind. So we could identify ethnos in the non-European society and including in the European society. We could identify the, the, the forms of people's society in Europe, that is, for example, all kind of religion organizations, that is uh, growing number of Muslims in Europe, they represent obviously pre-modern people's society, or including Christian, uh, Catholic, or Protestant church in Europe, that also is an institution of pre-modern type. So we have a kind of aristocracy, European aristocracy, that um, is more or less conserved, devoid of any social function, but it still exists. Uh, and maybe there are also some form of um, pre-modern um, religious institution in form of masonry for example, that is very important uh, part of the transition between traditional society, 
to the modern society. It is a kind of uh, intermediate organization between the church and the um, purely secular organization of the society. But the masonry that was important, socially important in the process of modernization of the Europe and uh, creation of United States, it has lost uh, its uh, operative um, dimension, but still exists and is not a little social institution. Not, not, not small, it is very important, very developed. So we could obviously find national level in uh, uh, Western or not Western, not European countries. It is obvious, it is a kind of normative uh, identity of any recognized national state in the world. It is uh, easiest form or to find. And we could identify everywhere the uh, forms of civil society inside of the national society in different uh, non-European uh, non-European countries, and also uh, uh, reaching um, the status of the global society on the regional scale in the um, in the case of European Union. So we have also global society that exists uh, in the limited space. And so we could identify including postmodern society in the art, in the films, and the philosophical and cultural and sociological theories of different uh, European society. And also we could find postmodernist artists or philosophers or scientists in non-Western society. For example, there are um, specialists in the postmodernist uh, postmodernism in the Asian, some Asian universities, and there are non-Western, uh, non-European uh, scientific circles that study postmodernist. There are some artists. There are filmmakers, there are um, cultural um, uh, and public uh, uh, persons that could be considered to be postmodern, post 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 modern actors. For example, the drug uh, drug addicts of different kind in the non-European. Um, country could be considered to be partly individuals because they they lose their normal identity of their uh, society. They are partly uh, post-modernists because they fall from the normative context of their cultural, national, or uh, traditional religious um, codes. So. Uh, Concerning contemporary moments of actual organization of the society, ethno-sociology could serve as important instrument uh, to analyze relations between European or Western and not Western societies living in different stages of ethno-sociological evolution and we also could apply the same methods to all contemporary form of society. And that helps us a lot to make important divisions between different form of collective identity that we are following mainstream of Western attitude uh, sometimes ignore or neglect so, because we, for example, what is not individual uh, is collective identity and if we uh, identify something, some identity that is not individual, uh, we are ready to say that it's nationalism, national identity, ethnic identity or traditional identity and so on without uh, necessary distinctions between 
uh, using or in using of these terms. And if we could use the concept of ethnos, laos, demos, uh, idiotis uh, as in individual identity, Greek terms, properly in any case of uh, that we we study, we could receive more correct and more scientific, more mm, more important results of our sociological researches. And in conclusion of our course, I would say that ethnosociology is discipline that is much, uh, in, much more important uh, than uh, simply the method uh, to study archaic tribes or uh, archaic society. Ethnosociology is a kind of historic sociology that gives us the possibility to study properly different kinds of historic or contemporary societies basing on the concept of the ethnos as holistic organic unity or community that undergoes in the history different uh, changes. It could uh, transform itself in the first, second, third, or maybe fourth deri derivative, or maybe stay as such during long thousands of years. But nevertheless, starting with the ethnos as basic form of human society, organic, primordial form of uh, human society, we could, with this concept, study societies with no traces of presence of the ethnos. So ethnos helps us to study non-ethnic society as well as ethnic society. And this concept of ethnos uh, is in the ethnos sociology um, acquires the sense and the meaning of central, very important uh, sociological category. So I think, I believe that uh, the knowledge and development of this uh, science, of the ethnosociology, could serve a lot to understand uh, the processes uh, and the most important cultural, social, political and geopolitical events of our world. So the usefulness of uh, this um, kind of academic studies for me is obvious and I hope that uh, different searches in the same direction will uh, be uh, m multiplied and uh, the other um, uh, scientists will continue to develop this important and uh, very um, engaging discipline uh, that uh, could help uh, us very much to understand ourselves and the world we are living in. Thank you.